So uh, as uh, Craig was saying, uh, my name is Walton Davis. I'm from uh, Johnson & Johnson Vision Care. We're uh, based out of Jacksonville. And uh, I'm here. I'm going to tell a story of how uh, Tell It device-wise saved our lives, basically. So uh, next. Uh, uh, a little bit about us. We are, uh, have two uh, manufacturing plants. One in Jacksonville, which is our headquarters. Uh, we make about three million units, or that is lenses daily there at that plant. And we have a sister plant in Ireland, which is a little bit larger, and they do about five million units uh, uh, daily. There's about uh, 2,500 uh, personnel in, at our Jacksonville plant and about 3,500 in our Limerick plant, rounds about. Some of the products that we make, uh, the AccuView brand is the, it's our flagship product. Uh, we have uh, other uh, variations of that brand, AccuView 2, AccuView Moist, uh, and AccuView Oasis, all products that are out in the market. Uh, I don't, can't quote what our market share is, but I'll, all I can say is it's pretty large. Uh, so we had a, uh, a problem a couple of years ago. Uh, we have, uh, uh, just full disclosure, I am an engineer uh, that went over into IT, so I'm not going to offend no IT people or engineering folks. So uh, we had this issue where the engineers went out and built this very expensive machine and didn't tell the IT folks anything. Uh, they uh, went through all the normal processes, got this machine to the factory, put it on the floor, uh, get ready to uh, do the uh, IQ, uh, hooked it up to the IT systems, and nothing happened. So at that point, they went looking for some help. So they came to our group, and they said, well, hey, guys, you're, uh, we can't send any transactions up to the uh, DHR systems or any of the MES systems. What's going on? You must have done something wrong. Well, it wasn't us. You guys never talked to us. So the, what they had done is they changed the operating systems of their uh, human machine interfaces uh, and uh, didn't uh, let IT know. And uh, it's an honest mistake. Uh, the, uh, they've done it before. There was no problem. Uh, but this time, they switched from Windows 2003 to Windows 2008, which was a 32-bit operating system previously to a 64-bit operating system. Uh, and uh, the COM components, component object model uh, components, don't quite work the same. So all of the interfaces that we had previously built were built for a 32-bit operating system. So uh, they had to roll everything back, long story short. So it wasn't uh, all, of the, all of the operating systems had to go back to the older 32-bit uh, uh, operating systems, uh, created a f several weeks delays in f as far as their uh, timeline for when they were going to bring the uh, machinery up uh, and get it uh, through the full validation process tied up a bunch of IT folks' time that was not uh, previously uh, allocated. So it's a lot of problems. So enter uh, myself and a couple of my colleagues. We looked at uh, where the engineering uh, folks wanted to go uh, and where we were. Uh, they had standardized the, uh, that particular system on uh, Wonderware. Wonderware is a, a, human, a human machine interface uh, that was, uh, this, I think, now built by or sold by Schneider. Uh, the system in which we, the IT systems communicated to the HMI was through this component called InTouchCom DLL, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, the COM component that failed. What did I just do here? There. So this, uh, this component in TouchCom DLL was a 32-bit component that 
uh, that failed once they moved to the 64-bit operating system. That component was built in 1999, so uh, that's how long they had been reusing this uh, interface, uh, so about 16, 17 years. And they had gone through all the iterations of operating systems from 1999 till 2000, and it had to be like 2013, I believe, uh, 13, 14, um, uh, with no problem. So that's the, ar the legacy architecture that the systems worked at, uh, are in. They had a, our IT communications uh, would talk to the InTouch application through this uh, interface, and InTouch ap application would talk down to the uh, programmable logic controllers. And other systems, such as vision systems, could be pretty much anything InTouch in had a driver for. Uh, we have another. We have an additional uh, uh, architecture on these same manufacturing platforms that leverages another uh, technology from uh, Wonderware InTouch, which is their ar ar orchestra technology. And that's what this middle architecture is on the, uh, 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 here on the slide here. Uh, it pretty much works the same as the uh, InTouch uh, Com. Uh, but it's uh, a bit more complex. Uh, uh, it, engineering doesn't like it. It's a long story short. It uh, uh, has, a, has a lot of moving parts. So um, we have, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we have, uh, our, we're headquartered out of Jacksonville. Our R&D department is, over, uh, is, is out of there as well. And uh, we kind of got wind of uh, they had found this uh, technology or a tool that they were using to do some things over there. Uh, at the time, it was called uh, uh, ILS. That's how everyone was referring to it. So uh, we were in the midst of uh, trying to figure out how to solve this problem. And one of the R&D engineers came up and said, hey, uh, we had some guys up from uh, Boca Raton. The guy was there like, 20 minutes and they were up and running. So that sounded real good to us because you know we had some time that was not allocated for. So uh, so we got uh, in touch with uh, uh, the folks from Tellit and uh, brought them up to Jacksonville. or invited them up to Jacksonville, and uh, they uh, described to us uh, their product. We did a few uh, prototype or uh, uh, smoke tests. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, implemented it in this architecture here. So uh, it's significantly simplified what we had been doing previously. But not only that, it enabled us to reverse engineer this InTouch Com DLL and this orchestra component uh, with a little assistance from uh, Tellit and we were able to retrofit all of our uh, engineering and, sim, uh, or, and IT applications with the uh, only change being the communication protocol. So uh, basically, we did that in probably, uh, probably about seven or eight weeks of design, uh, probably about the same in, in development, and so around about six months, we went from uh, basically being dead in the water to back up and running and fully validated. So we've taken this one step further. Uh, this problem occurred only on one application, so inside of uh, the product device-wise, we noticed that we could potentially obsolete uh, total applications that we had, had built. Because our factory is built, uh, is, is, is uh, architected on manufacturing platforms, of which we have four right now. M platforms in the sense of the actual machines that make certain products. So uh, in one of our uh, platforms, we have custom off-the-shelf uh, uh, MES systems and communication uh, pro protocols. And I say custom off-the-shelf, but it's, it's, it's highly customized commercial off-the-shelf products. So 
Uh, and then on, on one generation, which is where this problem occurred at, is all of our applications are custom built. Well, now we have, which means that we had to come up with the protocols, uh, do, go through the whole design, the uh, whole uh, event uh, model, the whole nine yards. Well, what we found is that if we use uh, the device-wise connector, uh, we could obsolete those uh, IT applications up there, build them with the uh, trigger, uh, project trigger uh, methods in uh, device-wise project itself. So essentially, we're sucking all of our IT applications uh, into a one commercial product, which simplifies uh, our change control, simplifies our uh, uh, interface with the engineers because the engineering uh, group is, uh, have, has a common inter interface. They feel very comfortable working with this product as opposed to uh, Orchestra. And they didn't even know what was in InTouch Com DLL, and we didn't either. We just knew how to use it because it was built by uh, a company called Lighthammer, which I don't even think they're even in business anymore in, in, in 1999. So, uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was a, a binary object. So this, uh, 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 once we implemented the device-wise uh, platform uh, on uh, those, on, on our, uh, third, our manufacturing platform, uh, pretty much the sky was the limit. What else can, these, can this uh, product do for us? Uh, so this kind of talks about what I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, our timeline, uh, and literally within four weeks, uh, we, we, we re-engineered this product into our existing solution. Uh, we did, we we're in a GXP, FDA regulated environment, just like uh, the folks from, from BNL. And uh, so that's got its own set of challenges. Uh, and uh, once we went through that, we put it in and literally didn't have a hiccup. There was the hyper care for the product was next to nothing, uh, which, kind of goes along with the drop-in support related issues due to communication, uh, uh, IT and our automation uh, layers. And uh, right now, in fact, we had to break away <laughs> to come up here because we're in the midst of uh, retrofitting all of our legacy systems to uh, uh, the Telit device-wise product because of its simplicity and, uh, and ease of use. Uh, the lessons we learned uh, from this, uh, uh, this episode, which was actually kind of painful when you think about it from the, uh, uh, the engineering perspective of bringing it in, so there was a lot of panic, but it ended, really had a very good happy ending. Uh, we we recognized uh, that we could have very reliable communication uh, transactions between uh, the IT group and the engineering group uh, applications. Uh, uh, the big thing from the IT, uh, so we run 24-7, uh, uh, everybody's on his own call rotation. Uh, we had a uh, drop-in support, which made everybody really happy in my group. Um, and uh, we also, uh, because of the success that we had at the uh, automation layer, uh, we found uh, a, a couple of other uses for uh, device-wise uh, for gathering data analytics. Uh, there's another group uh, that's using it for that. We have some folks that are using it in uh, some of our facilities, uh, engineering applications to gather information uh, and send information to some IT systems about our raw material handling. Uh, and the biggest one, the one that I think most of uh, the engineering group and my group uh, like the most is that the, the, the implementation of the project triggers is like having a, uh, an application encapsulated in another application, uh, which, uh, and a lot of the functionality inside that application that you kind of configure, because you're really not doing a whole uh, uh, lot of building or developing, it's more configuration. And, in our um, environment, um, when you say configuration, that makes people feel a lot more comfortable 
than when you say, hey, I'm developing something. So uh, that was a huge uh, ad uh, advantage for us. So, And that's uh, pretty much the story of how we were successful and uh, using the Vice Wise platform.